Welcome, welcome. Hello, everyone. Let's go. It's very energetic. I mean, Neocon is back. Neocon's back. So good to be back. It feels like we're back to our normal days. It finally feels like the first Neocon moving into the future. It's been a whirlwind, but I think it's been great. We're full in. Specifiers are here, designers are here, manufacturers have a lot of cool new things. I'm very excited to see it, to explore. Neocon 2023 is like buzzing. I mean, we walked in and our floor was already filled with people. Like the energy on the streets came up the elevator into our showroom. It was just like, wow, everybody got up early this morning, ate their Wheaties and got going. <laughs> it's crowded, it's loud, it's lovely. I think trend-wise, we've been moving towards the more residential interiors for offices. People were renovating their workspaces at home and their living rooms, wherever they were working. That influence is definitely felt heavily in the commercial sector now. So far, I've seen a lot of the kind of warm neutral palettes everywhere, the creams and the like terracotta colors. Terracottas, beiges, tans, chocolate browns. Straight up brown, which is kind of interesting too, you know, coming out of Greece. It was just very soothing and serene. Beautiful colors, muted, but really beautiful, deep, rich colors, but just what people want to see at the moment. It's interesting, during COVID, we were all sort of huddled in a space and we were afraid to go back into public spaces. It allowed people developing buildings and spaces to rethink how they create internal environments for their customers. There's been a blending of exterior and interior spaces. We're seeing that with people allowing the outdoors into their homes or into their offices, but we're also seeing that with materials and with furniture. We see the importance of deep, deep structure, deep texture, one of the most important trends that I see. It's interesting. There was a lot of textural textiles, a lot of bouquets, a lot of tweeds, stone uh, inspired visuals like the greens. We love seeing the blues and greens coming through with that biophilic foundation, moody shades, moody accent colors that really bring about this feeling of tranquility and meditation as we think about health and well-being in a space and how we're, how we're using a space. But then we have some of our other rooms. It is ceiling to floor green and it feels so retro. Retro, yes, and we're seeing retro. The earth colors, soil, the warm neutrals, the wood, all of that is very 70s, yeah. Retro really plays into the idea of optimism and hope, colors like the, the brighter yellows and the oranges. A lot of retro 70s vibes. So you're getting to see the colors, but also the shapes. A lot of round shapes. Lots of soft, curvy forms, you know, things that are very inviting to you. Very much reflective of the 60s and the 70s, and it's definitely something that we are showcasing in a lot of the silhouettes, but it also comes about in the color story. Dusky pink is coming back. So much pink, magenta, red, cabernet, burgundy, merlots. But it still feels modern with the different materials that we're bringing in with the stones and these matte finishes. It feels fresh again. It might be coming for our jobs, but I think if we can learn how to control it and actually funnel it into something that we um, get to navigate, AI can be a good add-on. What we're really trying to do here is talk about how unique human art and design is and how important it is that we, that we continue to come up with the concepts and direct the technology and not have it be the converse. Save my time to develop the concepts. Save my time to create the big ideas for this space or this product. But if AI can help me manage my schedule and my projects, I'm very curious how this technology 
can help us in those more mundane tasks. We're still connected, you know, to the, to the real world, to the physical world, and the AI is a tool. But I think that really our understanding of color, of materials, of finishes in the physical world that we live in is really going to be important. We're never going to lose sight of that. I think that's a big movement since COVID. We were all stuck on our computers, stuck behind screens. Now we're back to like the maker movement. Everybody wants to get their hands dirty. People want something that they feel is actually real rather than machine made. Making sure they're authentic to the material and the space and bringing through the soul of the artisan that made that into the piece. It's important in this moment also for the designer and architects, the innovation connected to sustainability. Sustainability is not a nice to have anymore, it's a necessity. It's not just a design consideration, it's gotta be part of the process. It is extremely important that the goal is to close the loop and to have a closed life cycle so that materials can be reused over and over again. Making it easy for our customers and our clients to understand the importance and the, and the sustainable information per product, I thought that was really smart. There's no certainty of what's, what's happening next um, and there's no certainty of what trend is going to prevail in the, uh, the post-COVID world. There's just a lot of innovations that are happening as well in so many different areas. We love seeing all that happening. We can't wait to see where we are next year.